The Flash's powers are derived from the Speed Force, and in the last story arc, we learned that the Speed Force may be destroying the entire universe. Well, we're going to go over that today as we go over the longest day in the Flash's life. But right now in our story, he's fighting Captain Cold, an old Cold-based villain that the Flash has dealt with numerous times before. But he's not normally a problem, because Captain Cold just uses a Cold-based gun and he refuses to kill. Not this time. This time, Captain Cold is trying to mortally win the Flash, and this time, his powers are coming from his own hands, not a gun. He quickly and easily catches the Flash, and then he punches him clean in the face. But how could he possibly be doing this? You see, they're actually fighting on the bay that Captain Cold has frozen, and he launched a boat up into an ice pillar. And on that boat is Patty, Iris, and a few of Barry's other friends as they're currently trying to hold on for their very lives. You ever feel like you've jumped into the middle of something? Well, this is the Flash, so we had to bring it right to this point right now. But, let's discuss how we got here. Why is Captain Cold so angry at the Flash that he's going to break all of the rules that he's set for himself? Well, Captain Cold has just lost his sister. She was in the hospital on life support when a giant green energy bolt went into the sky and it shut down all of the power in the city. Captain Cold's sister seemingly died that day, and it appeared as if all of this was the Flash's fault. Though we, as the viewers, know it was Barry's friend Miguel that caused this. And if you don't know that, maybe you should check out the last Flash storyline. Captain Cold can't earn a living. He can't even keep his team, the rogues, together. And now he can't even keep his sister safe. And it's all because of the Flash. So he froze the entire bay and the boat that Barry and his friends were on, not realizing that Barry was the Flash. And he did all of this in an attempt to draw out the Flash. All so Captain Cold can get his revenge. And while he's been fighting the Flash, he just dropped the boat off of the icy pillar. Well, the Flash can run faster than he's ever run before. But he really shouldn't, because every time he hits his top speeds, he's tearing the very reality that we all exist in. But he can't let everyone on that boat die. He has to catch them. But how fast is too fast? What will happen if he breaks his top speed saving everybody? Well, we're about to find out as he manages to save Patty and get a few of the other survivors off of the boat. But at these speeds, he opened up a wormhole right above the boat, and he didn't get Iris off the boat yet. He runs as fast as he can so he can catch her before she gets sucked up into it. Faster than he's ever run before. But folks, it's not fast enough. The Flash fails. So he continues at this speed and he grabs Captain Cold and he beats him senselessly demanding to know why. Why did he do this? Was killing all of these people worth it just to get the Flash to come out and fight him? And Cold through the beating simply says, You killed my sister. The Flash stops. Shocked. Cold explains what happened. And the Flash gets up, and he walks away for the police to handle Cold. But he does tell Cold as he walks away, I can't fix the past, but I can fix the future, and I can fix all of this. His next stop is to go over to Dr. Elias, the scientist who's been helping him figure out all of the Speed Force stuff, and he asks if he can use the cosmic treadmill that he made. You see, Dr. Elias knew the Flash going at high speeds was going to end up sending off excess energy that would open up wormholes. So he built this cosmic treadmill that will power the city based off of the Flash's excess energy. The Flash steps on it, and he goes faster than he's ever gone before trying to open up a wormhole. And he does it, allowing him to jump into the Speed Force so that he can save everybody. Meanwhile, Captain Cold's sister has pulled through. Dr. Elias' machine that is powered by the Flash has restored power to the hospital in time to save Captain Cold's sister. But his sister... She claims that Cold should have let her die for what he did to her. But we'll come back to that. The Flash ran into the Speed Force and the first thing he saw was an amazing world full of floating chunks of land. But before he could finish taking it all in, he finds himself being jumped by a man he's never met before. And after a few punches are thrown, we discover that this man's name is Turbine. And that he's been trapped in the Speed Force ever since World War II. Sadly, Turbine hasn't seen Iris West or the others that were lost in the Speed Force. But he does know Barry Allen. That's right, he knows the real name of the Flash. That's because all around them is the Flash's life on a constant repeat, looking into his future and looking into his past. And all Turbine wants is to go home. Well, the Flash still wants answers as to what the Speed Force is and why he's destroying the time stream. But Turbine decides to explain to the Flash that he is actually the savior of time and space, not the villain. You see, the Speed Force builds up like a bottle about to explode. And when it explodes, it opens up wormholes. 
Without somebody to run off the excess energy from the speed force, it opens up these wormholes in random times and it traps things into the speed force dimension. So Turbine, he came from World War II when the speed force opened up and it sucked him in. The Mayans were also lost in time when the speed force wormhole swallowed their entire civilization. But the Flash doesn't understand. If he's running off the excess energy, how is he even opening up the wormholes into the speed force? But Turbine explains again. It's not the Flash doing it. It's him. When the Flash runs at his top speeds, Turbine can sense him. So he spins faster and faster, hoping that it'll get him out of this world, out of this speed force. But it doesn't. All it seems to do is suck things into the speed force. The Flash can't believe it. These vortexes, losing Iris and her friends. It's all Turbine's fault. Flash grabs them in a hurry and they take off in a direction going fast enough to get the heck out of here. And he doesn't know where he's going, but wherever he's going, he's gonna take himself and Turbine out of here. Well, if only he'd looked around a little bit more, because Iris and her friends were just around the corner. But wherever he's going, it can't be any worse than this, can it? Well, would you consider landing in a city full of talking gorillas worse? How about a city full of gorillas with one named Gorilla Grodd who just killed his father to become the king of Gorilla City? Oh, and in this travel back to the real world, he somehow lost track of Turbine. But he must pop out somewhere, right? Boy, this is one heck of a long day for the Flash, isn't it? Well, after Gorilla Grodd tries to eat him, he ends up with an elder of Gorilla City. And the elder explains that the Flash is the bearer of light, and it is his job to allow Gorilla City to remain in the shadows and not be eaten by a speed force vortex like the ancient civilization the Mayans were. The Flash is their prophet, and he's their savior, and he's arrived at Gorilla City just as they're about to enter a time of turmoil. But Gorilla Grodd shows up and he tries to attack the Flash. He was going to be the king. He was going to lead the city into light and step out of the shadows. And he can't do it if the prophets arrived. The Flash can't be the bringer of light. It's supposed to be Gorilla Grodd. The Flash is just food. But the Flash smirks. He isn't the bringer of light, nor is he food. He's the fastest man alive and he quickly dispatches Gorilla Grodd without a problem. He then stands over Gorilla City and he tells them that he will keep running to keep them from being sucked up by the vortexes. But he can't stay here. They need to decide their own future. Iris is still missing. Turbine is still missing. And he needs to get back to Central City to figure out what he's going to do since the entire city currently thinks he's dead since he was on that boat also. And obviously, no one knows that he's the Flash. Eventually, he ends up in Iron Heights Bar, the Rogues Bar, where all of the rogues hang out while he tries to decide what to do next. And conveniently, Captain Cold is down at the other end of the bar also trying to think about things. Because if you remember earlier in our story, Lisa Snart, his sister, told him that he should have just let her die for what he did. But what did he do? Well, things are about to get even more interesting for the Flash because Heatwave kicks in the door to the bar demanding his revenge against Captain Cold. He declares that Captain Cold gave him his newest burnt to a crisp appearance and he needs to pay for this. Barry quickly gets thrown out of the building, which works for him, so that he can change to the Flash and run back in to see what the heck is going on. Well, the Flash really doesn't have time to mess around with these guys, and he quickly runs around them so fast that he sucks up all of the air and he knocks them out. And then he leaves them for the cops and takes off. But this isn't where the story for the Rogues ends. No, this is the Rogues' Rebellion. In Golden Glider, Captain Cold's sister appears and she walks through the police van and she takes Heatwave with her while leaving Cold there to die, as she puts it. She quickly picks up and moves Heatwave into a moving vehicle where Weather Wizard is waiting for him to get him out of there. And she vanishes once again, leaving Captain Cold to his own devices. From there, Glider quickly moves to a speech that Dr. Elias is giving, Dr. Elias being the scientist that helped the Flash figure out what the Speed Force is. Since she can pass through things and no one can see her but the Flash, she reaches into Dr. Elias' chest and she stops his heart as she puts a piece of mirror into his artery. He then falls over, and the Flash runs over to catch him! And then he's caught on camera holding what appears to be a dead Dr. Elias. Well, while the Flash is dealing with that, Heatwave melts a railway, Weather Wizard uses his weather powers to move a train, and they drive it into a giant glass side of a building, and into the Mirror World, where Mirror Master is waiting to take it. With Dr. Elias dying, the murder pinned on the Flash, Captain Cold removed from the equation, and a whole train stolen, Golden Glider declares herself the new leader of the Rogues. Captain Cold isn't quite as removed as they thought, and he doesn't agree with this. So wait, 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 wait. So we have the rogues fighting against themselves, but why are they fighting against themselves, and what did they have to do with Dr. Elias? 
Let's go back a year, when the rogues were normal guys with tech that would help them try and stop the Flash, but they were always defeated. Always. So one lone doctor named Dr. Elias offered something to the rogues. The ability to have metahuman powers. And Captain Cold convinced the entire team to encode their very DNA with their own various weapons. But it didn't work right, and it exploded, and Lisa Snart, Captain Cold's sister, was caught in that explosion. Each of the rogues suffered for their powers that day because their fearless leader, Captain Cold, convinced them to. Heatwave became a living fire that is constantly burning his own flesh. Weather Wizard's emotions match whatever the weather is now. Lisa Snart became the Golden Glider, a spirit of sorts always trapped in the Astral Plane. Mirror Master became trapped in the Mirror World, and Cold, he's constantly at zero degrees. So let's go back to the modern day, where the rogues are fighting and the Flash can still save Dr. Elias if he can just find the shard of Mira that Golden Glider has put in there to kill him. But Cold's not a moron. He can't take out the entire cast of the rogues by himself, so he freezes Dr. Elias in his current state so that the Flash and him can team up to put down his former friends. Captain Cold goes to town against his own sister while the Flash runs into the Mirror World and he's chased by Heat Wave and Weather Wizard. It looks like he's going to fight the three of them, while Captain Cold handles his own little family problems. The Flash takes down Weather Wizard, Heat Wave, and Mirror Master like he's done multiple times before, and then he goes back to check on Captain Cold, only to be knocked out by a sucker punch from Ice from Cold. Yep, Captain Cold just double-crossed the Flash, with whom he just teamed up with. He wanted to prove to the rogues that he was smarter and better, and they need him, but he didn't really want to defeat them. Golden Glider even calls him out, saying, Aren't you strong enough to defeat us yourself? You need him to help you? And Captain Cold says, Strength doesn't make you a leader. Neither does aiming as high as you guys did with the group. The rogues don't need to go to that scale. The rogues are family, and all of this infighting means nothing. We watch out for each other, and I'm a damn fine leader. So who's back on the rogues, run by Captain Cold? But before anybody can answer, the sky opens up to rain giant pods onto the streets, and out steps Gorilla Grodd, here to conquer Central City. And the Flash is currently unconscious. So many plot threads in this arc. Heatwave remarks that this is a fine time to knock the Flash out, and Cold simply responds with, How was I supposed to know that talking monkeys were going to invade? Weather Wizard jumpstarts the Flash's heart, waking him up, and he wakes up to a gorilla invasion. And the rogues look at him, and Captain Cold kind of says, Truce? The Flash's longest day ever continues as he begins to bounce off gorillas demanding to know where Garrod is. The rogues and the Flash team up to defeat the entire gorilla platoon, and the Flash at least figures out Garrod is after the Flash's speed, because he wants to become the Lightbringer. He wants to lead the gorillas out of the shadows as their own savior. So he leaves the rogues here to defend Central City, and he takes off at top speed to meet Gorilla Garrod. Cause, you know, he stopped him so easily the first time, didn't he? Well, it would seem that at some point, Garad got himself a little of the speed force also. And apparently he's now as fast as the Flash. The Flash tries a few tactics, but none of them seem to be working. And while this is going on, the rogues try to continue defending the city. But it's getting harder and harder as the mental powers of an elder gorilla is projecting the loss of Central City is to a nuclear bomb. So no reinforcements, no help is coming to help everybody. The Flash keeps trying, but give Grodd speed and combine it with the strength that he already had and the Flash just can't keep up anymore. And Grodd punches his mask clean off of his face. Well, Turbine ended up back in Central City all that time ago, and he ended up teaming up with a mourning Patty who thought that Barry was dead. And long story short, they also teamed up with a super intelligent gorilla named Solovar. And they're on their way to save the Flash, and they arrive just in time for Patty to see the Flash without his mask. Just as Gorilla Grodd is going for the kill though, he runs out of speed force. You see, his power had a limited amount and he just ran out. That's why he needs to eat the Flash, to get his unlimited power. Well, without any powers, Garrod is very weak, and Patty saves the day by throwing rocks at his head and then running over to an injured Flash. Back with the rogues, they continue their battle and they begin to make their way to the Elder who's making the whole city appear as if it's under a nuclear attack. They begin to get a little overwhelmed though, but they also begin to learn how useful their new powers are to everything. And they even get Mira Master into this fight. Patty brings Barry back to her house so he can recover, and he does just that, and he comes up with a plan to end all of this. He'll just give himself up to Grodd. He runs off to Grodd, who has had enough time to also recharge, and he gives him exactly what he wants. He uses his speed mind to think fast enough to open up a wormhole and bring himself and Grodd back into the speed force. 
back into his timeline and the possible futures and the possible outcomes. Grodd and Barry stand in the Speed Force, absorbing all of this extra power. But Barry knows that he has this. No one can compete with the Flash and the Speed Force. Especially with nothing here to cause a problem. It's just him and Grodd. No city, no civilians, and no friends to protect. And just then, Iris falls in front of him. And in case you forgot, she's been in here since the boat at the start of this journey. But don't worry about that, because we're in the Speed Force, where the Flash is king. And he pummels Grodd through all of his Chosen One spouting nonsense. And while this is going on, the rogues finally push through and they cut off the Elder's connection. Now that everyone on the outside of Central City has realized that Central City is still here, the military rolls in to stop the Guerrilla Army. Back in the Speed Force, the Flash has no problems defeating Grodd in here. And he lets a woolly mammoth that's also stuck in time carry Grodd away. The Flash grabs Iris and her friends, and he starts running at top speed so they can finally get everyone out of the Speed Force once and for all. And that's it. The Flash has saved the day. Iris has been returned from the Speed Force, he saved Turbine and got him home, and the Gorillas have gone home with their elders, and Grodd himself, he's now lost in the Speed Force. Oh, and Dr. Elias ended up pulling through, though he now wants to get back at the Flash for everything that the Speed Force has done to him. And Barry Allen decided to go back to being Barry Allen. I know I barely touched on that in this story, but for the whole storyline he was pretty much highly debating if he should be Barry Allen and the Flash, or just the Flash. There couldn't be any side effects to everyone tinkering with the Speed Force so much. Could there? <laughs>